Hello, my name is Ran and welcome to part 9 of my Roll20 Master series. This one is about what players love the most, the character sheet. As a player, when you look at your journal, the only things you're supposed to see are your character and everything else that the GM decides to share with you. Everything other than that will be hidden. You can open your character sheet by clicking on your character name or, as I showed you in the token video, select your token and shift double click it or shift click the settings icon. The first thing you'll see, and the first thing anyone will see who doesn't have permission to edit your character just to see it, is your bio and info page. When you click edit, you have access to it. As a player, you only have access to the name, the avatar, which is the image that will be shown next to your character on the journal, and some rich text box you can type in stuff right here. If you look at the same page through the GM's point of view, you will see a few more things. First of all, you can add a token, which is what will represent this character on the battlefield map. Then you can select which players can see this character sheet and which player can edit or control this character sheet. And the GM also have another rich text box at the bottom with GM notes that only they can see. And while anyone who can see the character sheet can read this, only the GM can see this. As you can see when I switch back to the player view. The GM can also duplicate, archive or delete this character sheet from here or by right-clicking the character in the journal if you have VTTS. Now let's talk about the character sheet itself. This is specifically for D&D 5th edition. If this is not your game, then skip to the advanced stuff at the end. You might still find it interesting. Do know that if you're using Beyond 20, like I suggested, and you have your character sheet on D&D Beyond using all that content, most of what you're about to see is redundant. The first time you access this sheet, you should be prompted to use the character mancer. The character mancer is a kind of character builder devised by Roll20, which allows you to easily build your character sheet, but it only relies on the content that you have unlocked in Roll20, which means if you haven't bought any books with character options, you only have the SRD. I have all my content on D&D Beyond, which is why I just don't use it. If you skipped it and want to get back to it, you can always go to the settings of the character sheet, go down and you can launch your level 1 character mancer, which basically overrides your character, or hopefully in the future, click your level plus and level up your character. The default Roll20 sheet has been made to look a lot like the default character sheet for D&D 5th edition. You have your name, your class to choose from, subclass if you have it, level, race, subrace. If you click this settings icon here, you can also type in your background, alignment, and experience points. It's highlighted with the dashed line at the top. This is something that is usually hidden and you don't access it a lot. And this is the area that you will mostly see throughout the game. As you can see, these boxes are the same. Here you can type in your personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws from character creation, and then when you click the cog, it'll close the editing line and just present them. On the left you have abilities, the numbers themselves, the score, is editable. If you click anything that's highlighted, it will roll that and throw it to chat. Inspiration is marked on and off. Proficiency bonus is controlled by level. Here you can set which saving throws you're proficient in, and which skills. Passive perception is calculated by your perception score. Here you can add tool proficiencies, for example, I want to add thieves tools, set the bonus, proficient, expertise, or jack of all trades, which attribute it's based on, and if, you, if there is any special mods. Then close the settings card to close it, and the next time you click it, it will output the chat. Here you can type in other proficiencies like armor, languages, weapons, and stuff. And when it's all set up, when the GM asks you what languages do you know, click language, and there you go. You're going to see this lock symbol a lot on this page. Whenever you click it, it allows you to manipulate the list, move things up or down, or outright delete them. You can directly edit your armor class, but it is preferable you let the sheet calculate it for itself. Initiative is governed by dexterity, and as you can see, you can click it and it will roll initiative and add you to the term. Speed is directly editable. Here you set your hit point maximum and your current hit points. If the token is connected correctly, this will be reflected in your HP bar. However, if you do add temporary hit points, this will not be reflected in your HP power. Why? I don't know. Your hit dice is governed by your class and your level. And when you short rest, you can click hit dice to see how much hit points you recover. Here you can add special attacks, but I would recommend not editing it directly unless you really have to, because these are governed by the weapons you have and the spells that you have. I'll show you that in a minute. 
Below tax and spell casting, you have your equipment, your inventory, with money counts on the side and the total weight however you decided to calculate it. If you're not using simple or no encumbrance, I recommend you switch to it right now. Now with equipment you can also just add things any way you want, but I recommend you use the compendium for that. A lot of the things you want to add to your character are available in the compendium. For example, you want a backpack? Search for backpack, find the backpack, drag it into your character. I now have a backpack. It counts my weight. When you add an item, you can click this little eye button right here and open up all its properties. You can have it equipped or unequipped. You can set it to use as resource, and then it will appear right here. And you can set it to have an attack, and then it will appear in your attacks. You can also add freeform properties, mods, and descriptions. Remember I said that armor is calculated? You want leather armor? Search for leather armor, grab it, toss it into your character sheet. I now have armor, it's weighted, it's calculating my AC based on zero dexterity. Look for your weapon, remember, do not grab proficiencies, grab items, toss it onto your character sheet. I now have a rapier, it now has an attack. And you can do that with pretty much any item in the SRD. So after you have the attack, you can just click it and see it in chat. The first box beneath the personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws is the class resource. This is a special field in the database that can be referenced specifically. For example, if I'm playing a bard, I can have bardic inspiration as my resource and count it. And if the token is attached correctly, you can see it on the bar and rank your specific class resource. Some characters have multiple resources, just pick the, the thing that you want to handle the most. And you can always add other resources if you want to add uh, ball bearings, med kits, arrows, ammunition, all that stuff. You can just click here to add more boxes. For example, I can just grab crossbow bolts for my crossbow, make sure I have plenty of it, and crossbow bolts are marked as user's resource, so therefore they appear right here. And you can modify them from here, and they'll update. This box right here is for features and traits. To add a feature, you can just click the plus button, call it by name, check its source, type in exactly where it comes from, and the description of the feature. But this also works with the compendium. For example, if I want my bard to be a half-elf, I search for half-elf, grab the half-elf, drag it onto my sheet, and I get half-elf traits. If I want to play a bard, I look for bard, drag the bard class to my sheet, and I get the beginning features of the bard. But the rest you will have to add on your own. When you have a feature, if you click it, it will expand so you can read it. Click it again to close it. When you click the cog, you can edit it. And when you click the chat icon, it outputs the chat. The bio page allows you to type in text descriptions for anything you want. Character appearance, LS organizations, character backstory, additional features and traits, treasure, all that good stuff. And then if you have a casting character, you get the spells. It auto-populates with the proper spellcasting ability for your class, your spell save DC and attack bonus based on your spellcasting ability, but you can always edit it if you want. And adding spells is as easy as drag and drop. When you have your spells, you can just click them to send them to chat. You can click on the I button to expand and see what they are, and then click on the cog to edit them. The last segment of the character sheet itself is the settings page. This is the more advanced stuff, but you probably should pay attention if you're a rogue, a bard, a monk, a barbarian, an eldritch knight, or a halfling. Let's start with the boxes on the left. The first one is your base class override. You can override your hit dice, carrying capacity, your attack modifier, your caster level, spell save DC, and this is where you set your halfling luck, whether you're an eldritch knight and whether you're an arcane trickster. You can add your second, third, or fourth class. If anyone's played with four or more classes, please let me know. I'm dying to see how it went. And you can also add a custom class with your own definitions. At the bottom, you can add spell slots over what is usually granted by spellcasting ability. For example, if you want to play Vecna in your campaign and he has two ninth level spell slots. In the center at the top, you have your ability overrides. You can change your ability scores magically or whatever you want from here. You can change your initiative modifier specifically, change if your initiative is normal or otherwise. You can add dex timebreaker to initiative, which I recommend. It helps separate people who get the same initiative result. And you can change the way armor class is tracked. Automatic is the standard way, but you can also set it to custom and override 10 plus dex plus wisdom if you're a monk or plus con if you're a barbarian. But if you're not any one of those things, set it to automatic. In the center, you can get pluses or minuses to your saves, including your death save, and change the global saving throw modifier for all saves. At the bottom, you can add bonuses to your skills and set whether your proficiency with a skill is normal or expertise, if you're a bard or rogue. You can also set your jack-of-all-trades right here, set your reliable talent, 
and change your passive perception. But over here on the right is the most fun stuff. First of all, if you're a PC, do not set this, it'll change your whole sheet. Here you can set whether you want your rolls to always roll advantage or you want to set them any other way, for example toggle, so you can switch between any kind. Same goes for whispering. You can set it to never whisper, always whisper, ask you every time you type, or have a toggle right here, which you can click between public or GM. I recommend you set auto roll damage to on, otherwise you'll have to click again on the weapon in the chat when you want to have damage. You can set how you calculate encumbrance, I recommend you use simple, and you can have exhaustion tracking on the sheet itself, which allows you to see what the effects are for exhaustion. And one of the most fun things is the global modifier fields. Let me show you how they work. With any global modifier, you can give it a name and then a role or a fixed value you add to each role and turn it on. The only exception is global AC modifier, which you can only add a fixed value to. When you have a global modifier, when you turn it on, each roll from the saves, from the skills, attacks, or damage that you roll will add all the set modifiers. So, for example, you can have bless add to saves, you can have bless add to attacks, you can have guidance on your skills, and add damage bonuses when you attack. At the top, the third tab is for attributes and abilities. On the left, you have abilities, which is basically a list of all the data on your character sheet displayed one after the other. You can change it here, but recommended is you just don't touch it. On the right side, you have abilities. Abilities are actions that are attached to your character, which you can show every time you select a token, or generally down in the macro bar. And you can edit them with Roll20 code, doing pretty much anything you want on Roll20. You can roll dice, type in text, add images, and access any field on your character sheet. There is a lot of text on it in the Roll20 wiki, but I suggest you just do it the easy way with VTTS. Just click the macro generator and open it. Select your character sheet and you have access to all the actions you can generate. And it will generate by itself everything you need. If your character is not a spellcasting character, just go down, make sure it's not sorted, that you can sort it later, and choose no foldering. And when you add it, it will add all the actions, each one after the other. If you have a spellcasting character, I recommend you do not add spells at the start. Just make sure no foldering and no sorting. Click OK, it'll ask you which ones do you really want, and you approve. Then we switch over to abilities, you have everything right here. I prefer race features, then class features, then attacks and other actions. When you're done with your basic actions, go back to the macro generator, open it again, and then uncheck all the regular actions and keep your spells. If it's a minor spellcasting character, if you only have a few spells here and there, then I suggest you just use small folders. This will arrange every spellbook level on its own in a tiny folder. If you have a lot of spells, if you're the wizard, the druid, something like that, choose the uber folder. It will collect all your spells in one folder. Just make sure when you're back to your abilities list to change it to something that makes sense. Then, when you select your token again, you have all your abilities at the top, and when you click your spells, you get something like this. Each of these you can click to activate the spell, whether it's an attack or just a spell description. The fifth tab also available from VTTS is the export and overwrite. Just what it says, just what it said all the other times. You click export, you get a JSON file, you can save anywhere, and you can select your JSON file later and use it to overwrite this character. While Roll20 has the character vault underneath its tools section, allowing you to select any game and any character you have in that game and import it in here, and then when you need to, you can just select which game you want to export this character into and export it from here. I prefer to do it this way because this is locally and under my control. The last tab is the token editor, which allows you to edit the token the way the GM could, and you usually can't. Change the name, show it, choose which one can see and edit what, if the values are available to anyone or everyone, where the bar is, light emission, and you can even connect formulas to your token. Just make sure when you're done, click update default token to set the default token for this character sheet, and the next time it is dragged from the journal, it will have this data, and if you want, update all tokens representing this character sheet in your game. And that's it for character sheets. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.